Rome and Carthage were the two titans of the ancient Mediterranean, and the Punic Wars were when these two titans fought each other. The Punic Wars themselves don't get talked about that often, and when they are, the third Punic War is almost always left as a side note. And it makes sense, really. The brilliant campaigns of Hannibal are certainly worth learning about, but it's important to understand the ending of this colossal struggle. So today we are going to delve into the underappreciated historical event that is the Third Punic War between Rome and Carthage. Our tale begins in 201 BC, at the conclusion of the Second Punic War. Carthage had lost and was stripped of the majority of their territorial holdings. Carthage also had to pay Rome 10,000 talents of silver, which in today's money would be anywhere from 30 to 200 million dollars. On top of that, Carthage could not wage war without Rome's permission, hence placing Carthage as politically subordinate to Rome. Rome wanted to make sure that Carthage would never again pose a threat to their sovereignty. To Rome's surprise, Carthage paid off the debt in under 50 years and began prospering economically once more. This alarmed the Romans, who now wanted an excuse to finish off Carthage once and for all. Fortunately for the Romans, Carthage had a problem for some time now. You see, at the end of the Second Punic War, there was a third player in the Western Mediterranean, the Numidians, who were the indigenous peoples inhabiting North Africa. The king of the Numidians, Messinissa, was an ally of the Romans, and he took advantage of a weakened Carthage to raid and pillage all over the place. After about 50 years of this, the Carthaginians decided that they were tired of being bullied and met the Numidians at the Battle of Oroscopa in 151 BC. Needless to say, that battle was an utter defeat for the Carthaginians, who were lured into a large flat plain where the Numidian cavalry were unmatched. Watching the battle was a young Roman named Scipio Aemilianus, the adopted grandson of the famous Scipio Africanus, hero of the Second Punic War. He would play a pivotal role in the coming war. While the defeat at Oroscopa was bad enough, Rome viewed the battle as a violation of the previous treaty, and used it as a context to begin a punitive invasion. The Romans landed at the port of Utica and then started the siege of Carthage itself. They managed to break down the walls but were incredibly disorganized and were easily pushed back by the waiting Carthaginian defenders. The Romans would have been in dire straits if not for the brilliance of Scipio Emilianus, who held back the 4th legion beyond the wall as a backup. With the initial assault failing, the Roman consul, Censorinus, withdrew for a proper siege. The Roman camp was situated in a very disease-ridden area, so Censorinus moved the camp to a healthier but less defensible location. There, the Carthaginians repeatedly inflicted heavy losses on the Roman navy via the use of fire ships. The Carthaginians also sallied out to attack the Roman camp, but Scipio once again distinguished himself through his quick action. In 148 BC, a new consul, Calpurnius Piso, was elected and took control of the Roman forces in Africa. He attempted to pull back and neutralize the towns of the area who were allied with Carthage, but failed. Bigger things were afoot in Carthage, however. The Carthaginian general, Hasdrubal Bothark, overthrew Carthage's semi-democratic government and installed himself as dictator. Carthage also formed an alliance with Andriscus, king of Macedonia, who then incited the Fourth Macedonian War in Greece in order to distract the Romans. In 147 BC, Scipio was elected consul. He was actually too young to be eligible for the position, but popular support for him was so great that the Senate waived the usual age requirements. Scipio immediately took control of the situation in Africa and disbanded the portion of his army he deemed to have a lack of discipline. He then launched a night assault on a weak section of the wall. The Carthaginians fled, leaving an undefended gap in the wall. However, Scipio did not feel confident the Romans could defend the city once the Carthaginians regrouped, so he pulled back. The siege was now in a complete stalemate. The Romans couldn't reach the walls from land, and blockade runners were easily able to slip through the Roman blockade and supply the city. Now, one of the key features of Carthage was its easily defensible harbor, where the Carthaginian navy was holed up and could launch attacks on the Roman blockade. So Scipio decided to do something unprecedented, the building of a dam across the harbor to prevent ships from entering it. Surprisingly, the Romans were able to complete the dam, solving the blockade issue. However, the Carthaginians responded by digging a new channel, from which their navy then sallied. The ensuing naval battle was sort of a draw, and not enough to break the blockade. In 146 BC, Scipio's consulship was extended for another year, in which he successfully breached the walls and proceeded to sack Carthage. 
The brutal five year siege was over. There was a common notion that the Romans then sowed fields surrounding the city with salt, but this is likely not true. Thank you for watching this video. You can help this channel out by subscribing and liking the video, and as always, credit to these people for some of the images shown here.